Hi friends, welcome to Open Source Summit Europe 2022 and for this session, uh, thanks for inviting us to speak uh, here. We were supposed to come in person, but unfortunately we had some medical emergencies and we could not join. So we quickly made this video uh, so that we can communicate or deliver the session at least online. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the session. Uh, today we will be talking about open container data protection, state trend and the Kahoo. Uh, with me, Sushant Kumar. Hi everyone. Yeah, Sushant uh, is uh, a lead architect in Huawei Technologies and working in Soda Foundation as an architect and a maintainer. Myself, uh, Sunil. Uh, I am part of uh, the same team, data management team. I head the data management team and uh, I am the co-chair of uh, Technical Oversight Committee of Soda Foundation. So let's get started. So we we uh, partition this, uh, the whole session uh, into three parts. The first is setting the context. Uh, what is the industry situation for data management, particularly on data protection? And then we will see what's happening uh, overall, especially in CNCF or Kubernetes or specifically on CSI and then what we are doing in a sort of foundation. Okay, so the first part is kind of uh, setting the context that most of the information will be available to you or known to you. This slide is self-explanatory. Today everything is connected. We want everything to be connected. Uh, data, devices, including people. So in this context for data management, we want the demand from the industry is we want unified and a global data management platform, which can provide us the data management facilities across edge core and cloud. So the domains, if you see edge core and cloud anywhere, the data is, we want the data management facility as a common unified way. <clears throat> and irrespective of the data types like file, block or object, it doesn't matter. We want something unified for seamless data management across this. And add to the complexities, we have different platforms, different applications and different use cases. Platforms, when you say platforms, Kubernetes, uh, OpenStack or VMware and things like that. And applications can be various applications on big data, AML and use cases are unlimited. Whatever may be the variables, the demand is having a unified global data management across. And we will see some kind of industry trend information about what's happening uh, on container application space. Uh, first, we'll see what is happening to the container application and then we'll see what is happening to uh, container storage because of this. See on the left hand side, you can see we have done some kind of data storage trend survey in 2021 and we also have done 2022. The result is yet to be announced, but based on 2021 result, we see that the container based deployments are exponentially growing. We can see these numbers and most of the top deployments we are seeing, especially the new deployments are with respect to Kubernetes hybrid Kubernetes and Kubernetes on-premise. And we also sense that these are no more notional, but it's real use cases deployments happening. On the right hand side, you can see some of the industry uh, reports. Uh, we have already put those uh, notes, the actual links uh, below as a slide note. The application container market is growing 26.5%. It is in between 2019 and 25. And similarly, container as a service is growing around 35% year on year. And the installation base and the real use cases, real production environment of container is growing really exponential. What does this mean? This means that more and more application deployments are happening in container based deployments. So the container centric storages are more. And also we see hybrid cloud data management requirements are coming up very drastically. So with this, what we can see is that because the container deployments are more, of course, the container storage or container data management 
is very important it is becoming important and inevitable so storage as a service was something uh, coming up earlier now it is moving towards container storage as a service these are some things we can derive from these trends and if you see the solution trends including the storage vendors because storage vendors traditionally their product vendors are more closed in nature but they are also coming out of that shell to build logical solutions to provide end to end data management with their own st solution storage box features and outside box features like data management o and m things like that and not only that they also embrace the third party storage solutions or open source solutions in their overall end to end solution stack this is what we are observing based on our industry analysis right hand side we have put certain examples like netapp astra vmware tensu pure storage orchestrator etc it's not with any priorities we just put some examples if you see their products it's kind of an end to end logical solution stack wherein they have their own storage uh, related products third party products and open source products to provide end to end kubernetes based or multi I mean, plus multi cloud kind of data management that's what we see in the solution trend and what's happening to the container landscape this is not with respect to storage this is just with respect to the container application deployment so the container landscape this is picked up from uh, landscape.cncf.io this is growing and changing uh, every now and then because more and more projects are coming in so this indicates that this container deployment is becoming container landscape is becoming important that's why more and more projects are coming up uh, in this space so this is just to indicate that things are really happening on the ground so hence container data management and container storage are critical so we came from the application side the application deployments are important so as the container storage now we just go one step down that container storage landscape what's happening and what it indicates so before going into this i mean some of the terms we often uh, use it interchangeably or confused so we just try to clarify the cloud native storage so it's some kind of a storage software defined storage that has completely api driven more or less rest api or a common api driven a kind of a solution so th th that's kind of called cloud native storage it can be on premise cloud or edge it doesn't matter similarly <coughs> container storage the container centric storage solutions are cloud native in nature uh, so it will have declarative api like gitops auto healing and things like that the developer productivity cost op optimization are truly hybrid in case of container storage and now coming to container storage interface this is a specification which right now drives all the container storage orchestration within kubernetes or kind of container based uh, solutions so whichever container orchestration engine compatible with csi specification can work seamlessly with the csi compliant drivers of the storage boxes so csi is a specification which drives the development of storage drivers to connect with the container orchestration engines example kubernetes now this is a typical stack this is just to show uh, we are not going to explain the whole stack but this is to indicate that where the storage uh, uh, has this its position okay now if you see you have business applications application platform orchestration and then container runtime engine so in container runtime you will have storage the compute and the network now the storage is what where we are focusing on right so this is where the storage fits in <clears throat> now we have picked up the storage specific projects from container uh, project landscape which we have seen earlier so if you see there are a lot of projects coming up in storage as well but compared to other projects like compute or network or any other projects the storage part of kubernetes needs it has got enough gap to get more developments research and solutions to manage seamless data management 
for Kubernetes. It's a fact. Now, some of those projects we have circled down. These projects are part of Soda Foundation. We will talk about Soda Foundation a little later. Uh, these are all joined uh, as echo projects in Soda Foundation to build some kind of a collaborative solutions. Even Soda Foundation, you can see in the cloud native storage space in CNCF. Now, what is the industry trends overall happening with respect to the product? This we have given just for a reference purpose. There is no comparison with the products, but we just want to derive that what are the key focus areas uh, today in the industry. So these are some of the products like NetApp, Astra, PSO, SMRL, Karavi. Karavi is, I think, uh, uh, renamed to data management modules uh, uh, by Dell. Uh, so no more it is known as uh, Karavi today and HSPC, uh, Velero, Longhorn, Restic, OpenEPS, there are more other projects, right? Uh, so what we have done is that we took these pro uh, projects and seen that what are the key use cases or the areas it is trying to focus. So what our understanding based on the data available is that more or less people are focusing on data protection area first because maybe one reason is that most of the use cases or the users they are ready to move uh, because it is a transition period from enterprise or uh, towards the container deployments so they may be ready to do something like non-critical on the data path so they have something like a backup restore those kind of uh, use cases they may be ready to trans i mean first to try out maybe that is the reason so we see most of the cases it is like a data mobility data migration uh, data protection and also kind of monitoring are some of the key features which we have been seeing on all the new uh, projects coming up as a first real kind of uh, use case deployment so this is just some more details on these uh, uh, products uh, netapastra pure storage uh, one more observation is that most of these uh, projects try to provide uh, the cloud connected data management along with their own storage product uh, so that's a good uh, uh, direction to watch out uh, because on-premise plus cloud and in the cloud again multi-cloud means multiple cloud vendors and seamless data management across the multiple cloud vendors are becoming more interesting uh, to the users so this is again a continuation to that so now what we the summary is that the product direction is inclined towards hybrid cloud data management more on cloud native storage support for data protection and mobility and backup and restore is kind of primary use case under container data protection this is something what we try to derive from all these analysis now what are we considering at sort of foundation so basically in sort of foundation we try to build an open completely an open source data management solution uh, to meet some of the challenges. So we'll first see quickly on what is Soda Foundation and then quickly we'll see some of the projects what we are working on. Then we move on the specific project which we are uh, building for container data protection. So Soda Foundation is a <coughs> sorry uh, uh, sub foundation under Linux Foundation. Uh, mainly focusing on data management solutions uh, across edge core and cloud it's completely open source projects we do some kind of research it's completely open and collaborate with the different organizations so this is basically run by industry organizations come together uh, it includes vendors users uh, and also standard organizations and solution providers uh, and overall solution and the end to end solution what we envision is that we would like to build a logical stack which may comprise of different projects but it can connect data management uh, for edge core or on premise and cloud for various different kind of applications and various different storage if you see the southbound there are different kind of storages on premise and also cloud the cloud is missing in here the multiple cloud uh, so we can seamlessly do data management across uh, any 
storage any platform anytime so this is the kind of vision what we have and the key propositions are it's completely open source it helps to connect the data silos you know it's vendor agnostic or cloud vendor agnostic or storage vendor agnostic or platform agnostic that's a way we are trying to build our solutions and it will be ext extens extensible because most of the cases we build things on microservice based architecture or plugin based so that we can have custom plugins attached to this whole solution and we also have some efforts to standardize we work with snia and such a, such kind of standard organizations to uh, support the standardization efforts in this direction uh, also we try to work with csi uh, and build an ecosystem for hardware software solutions and services and also later on we can have some kind of certifications on based on these standardizations so you can find our source code in these uh, uh, three uh, github repositories mainly in github.com sort of foundation all the projects you can find and as we mentioned earlier we try to cover the hybrid demands hybrid data management demands uh, wherein you can have edge and the data center and multiple cloud you will see some of the key projects now uh, this is our project landscape it has got our own framework projects where you can see slight light green it looks like okay so uh, kahu como and the blue color is our existing projects terra stato and delphin and all the light blue color oh, i think i am telling the color names correctly uh, so light blue colors are external projects which joined our echo project now we our key projects and focus area first i will talk about uh, the three, pro three projects which are already existing and some of the users are already trying out the one is strato this is for multi-cloud data management wherein you have multiple you can have seamless data management across different cloud vendors say for example you want to do lifecycle management data mobility data orchestration across different cloud vendors it seamlessly can be done with our unified interface for multi-cloud so it is a cloud vendor agnostic solution and is s3 compatible so even if you have an on on premise s3 storage uh, or uh, products like oda optical data archival systems which are s3 compatible you can do data management even from on-premise to cloud now the second project is delphin it is kind of qa or ga ready kind of a product where you can do a heterogeneous storage map monitoring it is not very specific to container deployment but it is for the enterprise solution where it is storage vendor agnostic so you can have storage monitoring across any different kind of uh, storages uh, it supports the resource alert and performance matrices and you can also connect to third party prometheus or maybe kafka for further analysis and the third one is the terra we call it as sds controller wherein you can do seamless orchestration uh, of storage on a uh, container or non-container kind of platform we support kubernetes openstack and vmware here across different storage again so our idea is that it should support heterogeneous storage and different platforms. Now, the key two projects uh, which we are working right now is one is Kahu. It's called Kahu. Uh, it's uh, it's a it's a Hawaiian word which means guardian. So it is primarily for container data protection. So we want to augment Kubernetes container data management and provide the extended features. Uh, than what is supported in CSI, exploiting the features supported from the real storage in a Kubernetes native manner. That's our idea. And Como is a multi-cloud data lake project. We are collaborating with SoftBank and for a object data management to start with. And later on, we will extend that features for a pure, complete end-to-end -end data lake kind of products. And the strato project the multi-cloud project some of the components we will be reusing in the multi-cloud data lake project as well all these projects this kahu and como is in very initial stage uh, some are in the initial phase of development and como is in some initial uh, phase of design and architecture so we welcome more community members or developers and experts to join us uh, to support us so that we can build these completely open source uh, solutions which will be useful for many others uh, in the industry now uh, 
<coughs> we will focus more on Kahoot because that is a container data protection and that's our topic today. Uh, so container data protection and the Kahoot. So just before going to the uh, Kahoot uh, projects, what is supported in Kubernetes data protection? We'll just glance through. Uh, this is again to emphasize that it is very important. So uh, in CSI, we have a, a data protection work group in storage tag of uh, C, uh, CNCF. They are working to identify the gaps. There are some gaps, some application workload, uh, stateful set, deployment, daemon set, all these are supported, but there are things not supported in CSI, volume backups, backup repositories, etc., which right now we are trying to support from the external products like Kahoo or Velero. Uh, but they are also looking at it. So we'll sync up with them and see that what we can converge and what we need to develop newly. So let's let's get into Kahoo right now. And uh, Sushant, you can take it from here. Yes, Anit. Okay. Uh, uh, so hi everyone, uh, myself Sushant. So Sunil has uh, explained the importance of uh, uh, the data protection and as well as the container data protection. So uh, this project Kahoo is mainly designed or we are working uh, towards solving some of the typical uh, data protection with respect to backup and restore feature for the containerized applications. So in this, uh, so if you typically think of a solution for this, so what we can think of is we have a certain set of uh, uh, application or workloads running on uh, certain platforms. And uh, in our, if you narrow down the applications, if you think of uh, container applications, the first thing that comes to our mind is like the application deployed on well-known container orchestration like uh, Kubernetes. And uh, below you have storages provided by different providers. So in the middle of uh, these two, so we can think of a solution which can help us or which can plug the gap between uh, protecting the data and uh, linking them to the storage uh, uh, backends. So uh, Sunny, next. Okay, so how exactly uh, Kahoot does it? Before uh, going there, what exactly will be there uh, when we think, what exactly comes to our mind when we think of a uh, backup uh, backup restore for containerized applications? So as we know, uh, the typical containerized applications will have uh, their own configurations uh, through which they will be deployed or the configuration which they will utilize during the due course of their uh, operations. And uh, um, typically the metadata for running those things. And also from the persistence perspective, uh, perspective, they might be having using some kind of a volume to which their application or the business data will be persisted. So their uh, typical area of interest will be to back up these two kinds of information, the metadata information and the persistent volume information to which uh, uh, um, um, which are which are to be uh, saved and protected for the future usage. So in this project Kahu, so our first uh, phase uh, in the initial phase, uh, this the, like I mentioned, our Soda Foundation uh, tries to solve multiple problems related to data man management. And if you narrow down next level, it is a container data protection. And the first part of it is it is first part of it is about the backup and restore. So that is in fact the first project under uh, Soda Foundation, uh, Soda CDM. So that is Kahoo. So this is the first one. And uh, um, the first phase, the typical at very high level, the requirement is backup and restore in Kubernetes as such, along with the different sub, uh, support for different providers. Uh, and the scope of the backup. So where exactly you want to take up how to what level of scope we must support. Uh, so that is where, that is what is our uh, main goal. Okay, so if you uh, divide the, I mean, at the goal level, if you divide uh, what are to be expected, what are the things that can be expected from this project? If you break down at very high level, we can categorize to three categories. First one is about the feature itself. So what are the things that comes to our mind with respect to backup and restore? 
Uh, second one is about uh, some kind of a framework support to uh, support multiple uh, storage providers. And third one is about mainly from the usability perspective. So coming back to first part, that is uh, with respect to the backup restore feature. So the key thing is about uh, back, backing up and restoring of a metadata and uh, metadata when we say the user's interest may be the based on the scope of the application or the magnitude of the application so user scope may be to back up a particular uh, back up the application at uh, different scope that means uh, interest may be to back up the entire cluster entire namespace or the application based on some labels or it may be even to a granular level of uh, uh, backing up a particular resource, like I am interested in backing only a pod one or some set of uh, like uh, persistent volume one, persistent volume two. To that level also, users' uh, uh, need can be to be catered. And second one is uh, snapshot support for mainly for the volume uh, backup part, and uh, some some support for some of the uh, storage side features. Like if the storage is capable of, uh, multiple storages are capable of providing incremental differential backup or full backup. So we think like at the platform side also, there should be support to um, uh, orchestrate this. And during the backup and restore for the business applications, always there will be a need to uh, maintain the consistency during the backup and uh, restore. Uh, that means there there will be some uh, use cases wherein user might want to perform some operation before taking the backup and perform certain set of operation after taking the backup for the business continuity. And backups across the storage providers is another typical need because uh, now the support set from storages may be varying and one might be interested to I have a feature wherein the volumes provided by uh, one one provider or volume provider, if somebody has a capability to backup, there should be a provision for that. And cross cluster backup means uh, backup in one cluster and restore in another cluster. And for uh, types of volumes, so volumes can be of uh, CSI provisioned or non CSI provisioned volume and backup based on the provider capability. That means uh, a different storage providers may be having a different capability. For example, uh, some providers have their own snapshotting capability or uh, uh, through which they want to support the backup or, or some providers may be, uh, they have a very good backup software without, uh, not related to any storage systems, but they, are, they have a specialized software to just to take the backup of a persistent volume. So we think like uh, based on this capability of the storage or the capability of our providers, uh, so the orchestrator should be able to cater to the requirement. So this is about the feature side. And uh, the key motive for uh, Kahu is, uh, uh, one of the key motive for Kahu is uh, supporting the storage provider framework through which uh, one, the, any backup volume backup provider can be pluggable dynamically. Uh, so either it can be to take volume backup or it can be to take a metadata backup. So at any point of time, we should be able to bring in new backup provider. Uh, that's one part. Second one is the coexistence of multiple backup providers. That means um, at any point of time, if user want to have uh, multiple backup providers for multiple applications or based on the need, the system should be able to make them coexisting. Uh, and third part is about usability from the user side. Uh, the requirement can be to take backup, have some kind of a control on taking the backup. That is, can be through some scheduled way or some event driven way or policy way. So this is some of, these are some of the high level goals Kahu has during the course of its uh, execution. So next, Sunny. So where are we currently? The currently our focus area is uh, we have, uh, as Sunil mentioned, it's a new project uh, started under Soda Foundation for this uh, uh, specific requirement. So we started with the basic support for the backup and restore uh, with respect to scope and uh, uh, volume snapshot support. I mean the backup support to snapshots and the implementation of the hooks and uh, currently the support is for the CSI provisioned volumes. So this is where currently we are working on. 
and from the storage uh, provider framework because we think uh, uh, this is the first thing to be integrated so that we can uh, add on providers at uh, either for metadata backup or volume backup so we have built in a uh, storage support uh, this uh, framework is built uh, considering uh, i mean in line with our csi uh, provider and csi framework way wherein we can just plug in the drivers with the capability and it can work so currently we have uh, this uh, framework wherein any provider can be plugged in we have certain set of interfaces to be implemented and through which it can be plugged in and uh, for the first phase we have considered nfs provider for the metadata backup and the next it can be extended for s3 as well yeah now i think uh, we can we'll have a quick look of uh, what kahu is supporting currently we have a short demo to have a feel of it yeah sushant you will share i will stop sharing yeah okay it is visible visible it is visible you can go ahead oh, okay so maybe font may be little small for the guys who are seeing from back sorry for that so uh, in this uh, this is i have used the kind cluster just to introduce the environment uh, we have used the kind cluster here and we have deployed uh, our application that is kahu so we can see like we, this is application in, currently this application is deployed on test ns namespace uh, which can be any namespace with of our choice so we can see like backup controller is uh, deployed here that is mainly the controller part for taking the backup and the restore of, of applications and another uh, part which is deployed here is for the nfs provider so as i mentioned our current support is for the nfs provider so we have deployed nfs provider so this nfs provider has two parts one is the provider part itself just like csi and another one is the sidecar from kahu uh, so uh, it is deployed with the two containers so uh, if you have s3 there will be similar pod one more which can be dynamically uh, deployed here and uh, for nfs provider is uh, expected to connect to an external nfs server so there are different nfs servers we can have in our system so in this for this demo purpose we have used the container the application uh, which uh, solves the nfs server purpose for us so it is deployed here so i just wanted to show uh, uh, um, how we can verify our backup so this is our nfs server so this is the path which is mounted and this is where our backups will be put so once we take the backup we can come back and verify what is saved here so uh, we can see the providers registered in our system that is nfs provider here and uh, these providers are mainly registered uh, mentioning their capability so we can see like uh, currently this is registered for metadata backup so and its current status is available so th this is about the provider and based on the provider we create the backup location this is nothing but uh, uh, kind of a storage class wherein we we tell which provider we want to use and with what set of configuration we want to use this provider so you can have different backup locations for the same provider with the different set of configurations so that your driver or the provider will be able to uh, realize the usage and now i just want to show how we can create a backup before that uh, we have certain set of crds uh, which are uh, deployed for this project so we have crds for backup location management provider management backups and restores and this volume backup content and volume restore contents are mainly for the volume backup and restore purpose so these are some we can think like this kind of intermediate informations uh, which are created and used during the volume backup process and now let's move on sanil am, am i audible right yes 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 go ahead okay okay 
So let's uh, see how a typical backup file will look like. So this is a backup uh, file wherein we give which namespace to backup and which kind of a resource to backup. So in resource, you can mention what kind of a resource and even the name of the resource. You can specifically tell to backup a particular resource. So we have a regular expression here wherein you can select all the instances of that particular kind or it, uh, or it can be a specific uh, uh, resource. So currently we are we are backing up a default name default namespace using an NFS location. So in this uh, it is for the pod. So currently we have one pod in this one, and there is no deployment in this namespace default namespace. So we expect this pod to be backed up. So let's just apply this. So backup demo is created and we can see the CRD object here and the stage and state. So stage will tell which phase it is in and state will tell whether it is completed, failed or whatever is the case. So you can see here volume backup location as well. Uh, so currently in this demo, uh, we have we are showing you only the metadata because there is no external storage interface or the storage provider integrated here. That is the reason uh, here volume backup location is nil. So we can go through the events and check what exactly have happened to this backup and uh, how the backup flow has taken here. This is about the uh, backup description. So now uh, the NFS server, we can go and check whether uh, uh, backup has come so we can see like our uh, tar file is created at the NFS server side and uh, it has backed up the pod. So uh, this is about the backup part. So we can also go and uh, check from uh, 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 check about the restore part now. So right now we don't have any restores in the system. So we'll create one. So we will, uh, during a uh, restore, we can specify certain set of parameters, uh, which like which from which backup it has to be restored and some other uh, customizations like here, we have given namespace mapping and also we can give certain kind of a prefix to identify the resource so that you, you will be able to identify the restored resources if you restore to same namespace. So in this example, we just did the mapping for the namespace. So we created the restore resource and it shows it is finished and completed. So we, it's, we expect the new namespace to be created as a part of restore process. So the restore namespace is created here and we expect a new pod to come up in the new namespace. So we can see a busy box coming up in a restore namespace. Uh, so, like I mentioned, uh, this is about uh, one one use case of backup. So, if you want to backup a specific resource, you can give a, a specification like this. So, wherein you specify which pod to be backed up, and regular expression you set it to false to pick up that particular pod. And also, uh, we can give a certain set of hooks if you want. So. We can support pre hook set, uh, uh, set of pre hooks and set of post hooks, which will be honored during the backup and restore. So, this is for the backup. So, that's a short demo about Kahoo. So, over to Sunil, can you can yeah, you can stop, stop sharing. Stop. Yeah, yeah. So this is what currently we are working on, and uh, we are in the process of developing and uh, verifying some things uh, uh, using some providers. Uh, then slowly adding more providers to our framework. So what next we have in Kahoo? So with respect to the basic support side, we, we plan to take up the part of uh, cross-cluster backup and restore uh, support. And from the provider side, 
uh, we we are currently we support the pluggable part of uh, uh, pluggable aspect of storage provider framework but supporting multiple backup providers at runtime this is something which will be uh, taking up uh, immediately and also addition of more uh, backup providers like uh, like i mentioned in currently as we are not integrated any of the volume providers we were not able to show any volume backup part but uh, we will be integrating csi drivers or uh, certain open source storage which is whichever is feasible and uh, integrate our system uh, so that anybody can directly use it and have a feel of it and from the user side next key thing is about the usability so give more flexibility to user with respect to uh, uh, controlling the backup yes, yeah thanks uh, thanks sushant for a detailed demo and uh, the feature description so we will quickly uh, wind up the so as uh, we discussed these projects are in uh, in the initial phases and uh, currently active development uh, is happening so we welcome developers of all levels of skills even if you are a student please join us you can join the slack and say hi and show your interest to contribute uh, we will take it forward from there uh, so it's the right time to collaborate uh, basically now is the right time uh, because you can join the container data management initiatives and also the soda lake initiatives if you're interested and uh, going forward data management what we see is that uh, most of the solutions will be mutually complementing solutions uh, uh, and inbox and outbox kind of uh, features coming together and we also see that storage as a service is changing to container storage as a service because most of the deployments are moving towards the container and cross cluster cross cloud and cross domain will be like a just normal requirement uh, today uh, and in coming days so most of the solutions when we design or develop we need to consider these aspects uh, uh, whether it is hybrid cloud or multi cloud or container cloud native or not we need to consider these aspects and storage vendor come up with uh, solutions uh, to solve the hybrid scenarios that is where they try to take this open source and the third party solutions to find out uh, how they can provide end-to-end uh, -end solutions to uh, their users and incidentally cloud vendors are moving to enterprise like storage vendors are moving to cloud uh, because on-premise cloud and edge the boundaries are narrowing down so you can't restrict to one domain uh, for any type of vendors so this is this is a kind of scenario what we see uh, in the industry and that sort of foundation we will continue our efforts to build open source uh, solutions completely open source solutions uh, to build data management solutions uh, for hybrid data management uh, challenges thank you so much for uh, listening to us and if you have any questions uh, please uh, get in touch with us in any of these uh, channels thank you so much have a nice day and enjoy the rest of the conference.